Obviously, if statements are a big part of development, we can't really get out of using them. But what we can do is apply some very basic rules to just tidy up the way that we actually use if statements. So there's a couple of things that we're going to go over, a couple of bits of advice I'm going to give you. And when you start to apply these to your projects, you'll find that actually your code looks and reads a lot cleaner. So just to start with, let's look at a basic example. Let's just say we had some kind of user model. And inside of here, we had some kind of method which allowed us to grab the full name. Now, the whole reason that we would use a method in here is because what we'd want to do is concatenate the first name uh, with a space and then the last name. And that would uh, avoid us having to repeat code throughout our application. Now, what we would need to do in this case is check if the user had a first name and a last name. Potentially, uh, they don't have either. So what we would do is something like the following. So we would create an if statement. We would say if this first name and this last name. And then from this, we would then return maybe this first name. And then we would concatenate on this last name. So pretty straightforward. Now what we might do as a default is just return null or return an empty string or whatever you would expect to see here. Now this is gonna be a really basic example and I'm gonna try and explain why this is best practice. But generally what I've found when I develop, the rule is always return what you're expecting last. E.g. do the checks that you need first and then don't nest any of the return values that you'd expect to see. And hopefully by the time we switch this around, you'll see why this is the case. So what I would simply do here is I would get rid of this or at least move it down to here. And then in here, I would return null, but I would return null if this didn't exist or the last name didn't exist. Now, the way I look at this is what we're doing is we're doing perhaps other checks in here as well. Now, if we were to return this in here and we needed to do another check, that of course would mean we may have to duplicate this line. So what I always tend to do is the expected return value, I add last, and then inside of here, I can do as many checks as I want, returning null, throwing exceptions, whatever you need to do. Obviously, this is a really basic example, but hopefully you get the idea. So that's just what I would do in some kind of method. To me, this looks a lot cleaner now. I can see, oh, I'm returning null here if these don't exist. And then finally, I'm returning my expected value. So now that we've done this, let's look at a slightly more complex example. And this kind of involves nesting if statements and also using if else. Now, obviously by this, I mean saying if and then else. And then by nesting, I mean placing another if statement inside an if statement, and then potentially another one inside of there. This tends to get really messy really quickly. And when you're trying to debug, when you're trying to go back and change things, this is an absolute nightmare. I've been there in the past, and I'm sure you have too. So let's look at an example, a kind of pseudo example of what would happen if we uploaded a file. So the first thing we would want to do is check if that file was set. Now, obviously, this isn't real code. It's not going to work. But you may do something like this or you may check the file, super global, whatever. Now, what you might have inside of here is another check now that you know that file has been set. And this check might see if the file extension is within a list of allowed file extensions. So you may do something like if in array file extension which you would have created earlier and then maybe in allowed file extensions like so now obviously this is a very simple example but in this case we may go ahead and upload the file now otherwise so let's say we have an else we might say return and this might be somewhere where we error and we redirect the user back with that specific error now, there's still one thing we might add, it, add to this. If the file doesn't exist, we might want to tell the user. So we would add another else on here. We would return and again here we would error and redirect. Now, you might not see anything immediately wrong with this, but obviously this is a really simple example. And for more advanced functionality, you're going to end up with lots of lots of if statements, nesting, else's. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can do exactly what we've done here 
without using an else and without nesting. So you can very quickly and easily tidy this up uh, and so it reads a lot better. So to do this then, let's just comment this out so we can refer to it and see what we're doing. Now think about it this way. Think about checking things that are negative, much like the example we looked at the user model. We said, well, if the user doesn't have a first name or they don't have a last name, then we just want to return null. Now, in this case, we can do exactly the same thing. So rather than saying if it is set, we're going to check here if it's not set. So we would say if not is set dollar underscore post file or again using the file super global, then we want to do that return and we want to error and redirect the user. Now that's all we need to do because at this point you are kind of breaking the flow of your application and you may be redirecting the user here. So that would uh, redirect and you could show an error. Now the next check is obviously the in array. So in this case, we would do another if statement on the same level. So there's no nesting here at all. We would say in array file extension allowed file extensions. And again, we would say if it's not in there. So again, we're checking for a faulty value and then we're erroring and potentially redirecting. Now it's important to note at this point that you would have to break the flow at this point. So either if it's a very simple application, kill the page here, uh, return if it's some kind of method or uh, use a redirect in here, whether using a framework or just raw PHP. So now all that's left to do down here is upload the file because you've redirected someone off if something went wrong. Now here you can assume, well, everything's fine. So I can just go and upload the file. So it really is as simple as that. Just thinking about taking an example like this, or you may have some code at the moment that does look like this and just thinking about it in this way. And you'll end up with a much cleaner if statements, easier to read, easier to maintain, which is really important within development.